Coming up on CPTV, mental health awareness creates positive spaces across the nation. CP teachers and students discuss the possibility of President Donald J. Trump's impeachment, and the community of CP shows cheer for the holiday season in full swing. CPTV is up next. Hi, I'm Armando Bracco. And I'm Jenna Mylosh. Welcome to CPTV. Kirsten Robinson will have your five-day weather forecast, and Jean Collaric will bring us CP Sports highlights. Here's what's happening at Crown Point High School. As medical and psychological advancements progress throughout the years, the taboo surrounding conversations about mental health are getting lifted in the process. Nowadays, high school students are encouraged to realize the importance of their mental health along with their physical health and seek help when they need it. But how does this affect CP students? CPTV's Brianna Morton is here with more. Students are often tasked with managing rigorous classwork, extracurriculars, and often jobs. Recently, mental health is becoming less of a taboo topic across the nation. This is causing people to begin looking at students in a different light with more awareness towards depression and anxiety. At this point in the year, finals are in full swing, causing student stress levels to be at an all-time high. Making fun of mental illness for a very long time um, through random terms that they use when they're making fun of each other and so forth. Um, and you always hear of people saying, oh, they're just being dramatic, or oh, they're not really depressed, or oh, they're not really anxious. Um, and we have to be careful of that, because if a person really is feeling that way, we want to be sensitive to that. Um, I think it's really important that high schoolers listen to their bodies. Uh, one of the very first signs, like sleep deprivation, is just that fatigue that you feel every single day and not being able to pay attention. Um, if you're having thoughts of depression or if you feel like you're getting anxious for no real reason and you can't find that source, those are things that you need to pay attention to. When during the school hours and seeing kids, um, it's been interesting to have students have panic attacks in the middle of the hallway and not even able to get up off the floor and there's just surges of kids walking around them and you have to make sure you have a healthy balance in your life that you can be completely focused on your academics and your future career but you can also lose light of who you are right now in your life. It's only an increase in anxiety. Um, it seems like kids are having a lot harder time dealing with stress and it's escalating to anxiety and then panic attacks. Uh, we can only hold so much, so we're going and we're going and we're going and we're trying to either ignore it, pretend like it's not there, you know, the stress that we're carrying, that we're dealing with, the problems that are happening. Um, if we're not effectively dealing with it, managing it, coping with um, things in a healthy way, you know, it's like, we're holding it all in, holding it all in, and then we get to a breaking point. Uh, helpful to talk with somebody that um, doesn't have a biased or emotional kind of connection with you. You know, um, counselors care and want the best for you, but they're not um, attached to you the same way that your friends are. So they can give you a non judgmental, unbiased kind of perspective. I think that can be very helpful. Or the way that we deal with stress in a healthy, productive way. So um, we all have coping skills. Some of them are not healthy, but um, we need to find the ones that work for us. So for me, like I do, I go exercise or I get up early and I, I do some reading or journaling or things like that. Everybody's gonna have to find something that works for them. Awareness of mental health is an important part of making sure people are able to get better. Students who are experiencing symptoms of mental illness should take the first step to get better, which is to talk about it. For CPTV, I'm Brianna Morton. Students aren't just getting more educated on their own mental health, they're also keeping a close eye on our surrounding political environment as a whole. This includes the current White House and congressional issue of President Trump's possible impeachment. To find out the likeliness of Trump actually getting kicked out of office, here's CPTV's Ryan Costello with more. 
Impeachment has been the main focus for the Democrats as the Democrat-controlled House has passed the Articles of Impeachment. After a party-line vote favoring impeachment, a full House vote this week will determine whether or not President Trump is impeached. But unlike what most people think, this will not remove him from office. I know that impeachment is when a president loses their office due to misconduct, but I'm not sure what the process of impeachment entails. Impeachment, like, I think it's like when the president does something bad, but I don't really know exactly, like, what specifically, because I know he has something to do with like some leader in a different country. Impeachment is essentially just like the Congress and votes to impeach the president and then he, that means he's impeached but then it has to go through the, the Senate so he's not technically out of the White House. An impeachment is just an accusation. Uh, what that means is kind of like an indictment in a criminal, um, in a criminal case where uh, you would draft articles of impeachment on some type of action that was deemed as inappropriate, unconstitutional, uh, against the oath of office of the president. That takes a simple majority vote in the House in order to impeach. Uh, it moves over to a trial in the Senate, which is considered... Um, uh, or excuse me, presided over by the uh, Supreme Court Chief Justice if you're going to remove the president from office. While it might be likely President Trump is impeached in the House of Representatives, the odds he gets removed from office by the Senate seems to present its own challenges. Uh, I can easily see this moving on. That'll probably happen this week, uh, moving out of the House of Representatives. It's going to get a little bit mm, uh, muddier in the, in the Senate because the Republicans can control that. More will be discovered this week, as in the coming days, history could be made because only three U.S. presidents have faced impeachment. While Andrew Johnson and Bill Clinton have been impeached, President Trump could be the third. For CPTV, I'm Ryan Costello. With the downfall of the Star Plaza and Radisson Hotel in Maryville back in 2017, hopes were high with what could possibly be done in order to revamp the space and bring new opportunities for the community as a whole. But now in 2019, White Lodging Services decided to cut ties with the previous site and are now open to selling. What do we expect in upcoming years? Here's CPTV's John Lieber with more. Just four years ago today, the corner of I-65 and Route 30 was filled with the Radisson Hotel, the Star Plaza Theater, and the Twin Towers of Maryville. White Lodging Services demolished the area with the promise to rebuild a $365 million redevelopment project called The Farm at the Crossroads Commons, which would include a meeting and event center, four hotels, an office building, a below-grade parking garage, townhouses, condos, two restaurants, a craft brewery and distillery, an art gallery, a visitor center, a greenhouse, and a 30,000 square foot horse riding arena. But without help from the community, White Co. decided to abandon their plans. White Lodging Director of Communications Mike Bannis said, The White family doesn't have any further plans to develop the property. The company is now open to selling the 40-acre lot. The site, which was built by the late Dean White in the 1970s, turned Maryville into a bustling commercial area and created revenue for the city of Maryville. City Council Member Sean Pettit said, We would certainly like them to reconsider developing the farm at Crossroads Commons on the property noting that it would have generated six to seven million dollars in property tax for the city. Now, as this 40-acre lot sits vacant, locals ask why would White Logic not commit to the city where they were created and company headquarters are still located. For CPTV, I'm John Lieber. Last month, the cast and crew of But Why Bump Off Barnaby went to regional competition at Hobart High School and placed second in the region. This means they'll be moving on to the state competition in Indianapolis in January 2020. We saw a little snow over the weekend into Monday, and it begs the question, can we count on a white Christmas break? Here's CPTV's Kirsten Robinson with your five-day weather forecast. Yeah, we saw some snow on Monday, but thankfully we shouldn't see any more in the next few days. Before we get into the long-range forecast, let's take a look at what you can expect for the rest of today. We shouldn't see anything but clear skies throughout the day and even going into tomorrow. The temperature will stay within the low 20s, only hitting a high of 23 before dropping right back down to 21 for the rest of the night. For your five-day forecast, tomorrow the high will be 36 degrees with those same clear skies we saw today, carrying out throughout tomorrow. Friday, clouds will set in with the temperature hitting 40 degrees. And as we look at your weekend, the temperatures will continue to steadily rise in the low 40s. Monday, we're looking at a high of 48. Let's just hope that warmer trend continues into winter break. That's your five-day forecast. Enjoy your break, everyone. Armando, Jenna. Thanks, Kirsten. I guess a white Christmas doesn't look probable. The CPHS Alumni Association is sponsoring a juried student and alumni art show throughout February, open to all CPHS seniors and alumni. Cash prizes will be awarded, and the submission deadline is Tuesday, January 7th. For more information, go to cpaashow20.org. 
The wrestling team slams the competition in Illinois, and the girls' basketball team continues to dominate the region. Here with CP Sports Highlights is Gene Calera. The girls' basketball team took on the 5-4 Valparaiso Vikings at home Friday night for the Military Appreciation Night. The dogs started out hot, outscoring Valpo 18-9 in the first quarter, and never looked back, only giving up 17 points for the rest of the game. CP came out victorious with a score of 57-26, moving their record to 13-0. Sophomore Jessica Carruthers led the scoring with 20 points, and senior Dash Shaw also added 10. The boys' basketball team traveled to Warsaw on Saturday to take on the 4-1 Tigers. Crown points started out slow, but kept close going into halftime, only down two. The dogs came out of the break and gave up 18 while only scoring nine, and the gap was too great for CP to overcome and ultimately lost the game 50-38, dropping the record to 2-2 two two on the season. Junior Ty Smith led the scoring for the dogs with 20 points, and Miles Lubers chipped in with 11. Last night, the swim and dive teams faced Highland High School. The boys won the meet 128-46, and the girls won 115-63. The meet offered the chance for both varsity and JV to compete. Maya Vanderwood and Lucas Leapes came out with wins in diving, and the teams continued to get good point production from the freshman and sophomore classes. The wrestling team traveled to Oak Park, Illinois, to participate in the Oak Park River Forest Mega Quad. In the first round, CP took on Oak Park, who they defeated 33-31. They next took on Providence Catholic, who they handled easily with a win of 55-22. Last on the day, the Dogs took on number 17 nationally ranked DeKalb High School and knocked them off with a score of 34-31. CP has four wrestlers that remain undefeated this season. Freshmen Sam Goyne and Logan Frazier, and seniors Riley Bedich and Cody Goodwin. And that's it for sports. On Wednesday, the CPHS Key Club hosted its annual Christmas party for the CP community and CPHS students. Food was provided, Mr. and Mrs. Claus were present, and attendees were able to participate in a marshmallow snowball fight in order to get into the holiday spirit. Here's CPTV's Rocco Jan. The Crown Point High School Key Club recently hosted its annual Christmas party for the community. Here's what a few of the citizens of Crown Point had to say about the new memories that they experienced at this momentous occasion. I love that we get to decorate and help set up a party for the kids. It's pretty great. Yeah, there are a lot of fun games and there's like cookie making, which is like pretty cool. <laughs> um, I like the Key Cup Christmas party because it allows a bunch of kids to have fun where they might usually not be able to have fun like this. Um, it helps our community. It makes everything better, I guess. I love the Key Club Christmas party. It's a great time every year. I've been for four years and just being able to um, spend time with my peers but also play games with the kids in the community is just a really nice experience. Oh, the Key Club Christmas party is so great. You get to meet so many different parents. The kids are doing pretty good. We're, we're getting more and more on the naughty list as, as the years go by, sadly, but I'm hoping something will change that to where I just totally get rid of the naughty list. <laughs> Safe to say, many Crown Point residents definitely made many new memories here at Key Club's annual Christmas party. For CPTV, I'm Rocco Jan. Here in Crown Point, the Indiana Dunes National Park is a well-liked option for outdoor activities, including camping, tours, or just a day at the beach. However, rising water levels and erosion affecting public safety put the future of the dunes in danger with some of the beaches and attractions closing because of hazardous conditions. Here's CPTV's Zach Jones with more. The nation's newest national park is in our own backyard, and it's at risk. As you can see here, Lake Michigan's recent record high tides are causing erosion among the Indiana Dunes Beach shoreline. It has taken away this river walk and taken away 16 feet of rubble and sand into the middle of the lake. We're experiencing a lot of erosion because of high lake levels, and uh, it's basically made some of our beaches smaller. Mm -hmm. It's made access to some of those beaches more difficult. And uh, it's actually a natural process and it happens all the time, but this seems to be the worst year because the lake is almost at historic high levels. Indiana University professor Dr. Ken Schoon studied the Indiana Lakeshore for his book Calumet Beginnings and cites the erosion is now a natural occurrence and believes older generations could be to blame. There are, well, there are some things that we, could, that we shouldn't have done in the past. Um, one of the things that was uh, done in the past uh, was for people to steal sand from the bottom of Lake Michigan. Uh, they had boats that uh, had, uh, I'm not going to call them vacuum cleaners, but they were uh, uh, vacuum uh, uh, pumps that pumped up water, but 
they put the mouth down onto the, the sand, so it was pumping sand up, and they would fill the cargo hold with sand. Uh, because this was taken from the bottom of the lake, uh, pretty close to the shore, because you, you know they can't go too far, too deep. But they would then take this sand that nobody officially owned, so they didn't have to pay for it. But the Department of Natural Resources in Indiana thought, oh, we can sell this sand. And so they made it perfectly legal uh, to uh, pull the sand up from the bottom of the lake, uh, far enough away that it was, they weren't taking it from the shore, but when you make a big hole because you've dug sand out of the bottom of the lake, then other sand closer to the shore uh, goes in to fill that hole up, and that can cause erosion of the beach. The Dunes National Lakeshore is the number one tourist area in Indiana, in the whole entire state. So this does pose a potential threat for our local economy. So if the water does continue to rise and possibly close trails or even um, hurt native plants, less people are gonna come out to the dunes, which means that uh, you know less money is gonna be spent in our area. Now the Dunes Committee has issued multiple warnings to avoid the Indiana Dunes at all costs. The only two parks that remain open are Mount Baldy and the Riverwalk, but those could close soon. For CBTV, I'm Zach Jones. With just under 3,000 students, it's impossible to know every person who walks the halls of CPHS. Here at CPTV, we are attempting to introduce more students to you while celebrating that diversity we each possess. This week, we feature junior Emily Helmuth. Growing up, I've had so many great coaches and role models, and I've also had not so great coaches, so I really want to be that great coach for the kids instead of being one of those, like, eh, coaches. So I, like, I really enjoy being a positive role model for the kids in my ninja classes. Ninja Zone is a combination of parkour, gymnastics, free running, and martial arts, and this is mainly catered to younger boys and girls. We teach them skills from all four of those sports and we also combine that with teaching them about responsibility and being respectful to other people and we try to instill this sense of being a better person. To manage my schoolwork in Ninja Zone I have an aid period first hour so that is super helpful to managing all my schoolwork with Ninja and I do a lot of my work at home or even in between school and work. If you're looking for something to do to get you into the holiday spirit, look no further than CP's own Holiday of Lights tour. Whether you book a ride on Molly the Trolley or grab the map off the city's website and go on your own, there's a lot to see. Here with more is CPTV's Sebastian Zenowitz. With Christmas Day coming soon, many people here in Crown Point have decorated their homes and have prepared Christmas parties with their family and friends. But if you head downtown, chances are you will find many more holiday events and activities. The Tree of Lights here in Bulldog Park is just one example. The Tour of Lights is an annual holiday trolley tour that takes place in the city every single year. Um, residents can sign up to be a part of the tour and submit their homes, or if they're not feeling up to it, they can always just sign up to ride the trolley, which is our most popular option. Um, a lot of people have turned the Tour of Lights into a holiday tradition for them and their families, so I believe that they like to just spend that time with family and revel in the holiday lights and just kind of enjoy that time. It has been going on for at least the past 10 years. Um, it's been a very time-honored tradition and a lot of families here love it and people sign up for it even in October sometimes. Some people submit their homes every year for the Tour of Lights, one of them being in the Lakes of the Four Seasons. The yard is filled with lights and they even have a radio station for people to tune into and watch the lights dance with the music. I've been decorating my home now for approximately 13 years. Each year it changed. I've, uh, I've added lights starting from 5,000 to 20,000 lights. Uh, each year it takes me approximately now at this time uh, 40 hours total to do. So it's like a two Saturdays, a couple Sundays, trying to get them all up and ready to go. The dancing lights around Crown Point bring and capture the holiday cheer this season. I love Christmas time. Um, I was born the day after Christmas, so that's exciting for me. Always enjoyed the lights. Did it at my mom and dad's house all the time. And once I got my own home, I started really brightening up. So if you want to head out of the home for some holiday fun and get hyped up for Christmas, the square downtown is the only place to go. Can't wait to meet Santa Claus myself and see all those fantastic Christmas lights. For CPTV, I'm Sebastian Zenowitz. 
Lots of empty big box stores can be found scattered throughout the region, but in Cherville, Santa is coming to the rescue. A Santa's Winter Wonderland interactive pop-up is taking over the former Ashley Furniture Home Store on Indianapolis Boulevard and is being promoted as an immersive Christmas photo op and interactive experience featuring 33 hand-painted twinkling Christmas and winter-themed attractions, including a Santa vs. Grinch wrestling arena, a peek into Santa's office, and life-sized ornaments. Tickets are $15 for adults, $12 for teens, and $10 for kids 12 and younger. For more information, visit Santa's Winter Wonderland 219.com. The CPHS Holiday Concert Series is about to conclude, but not before two final performances by the choir Thursday night at 6.30 and 8 p.m. in the auditorium. Tickets are still available. Christmas music has been known for the unique sound it has that makes it different from much of the other music we hear today. There are certain elements that have come to define the holiday tunes that help contribute to the original sounds. Here's CPTV's Sam Massey with more info. Do you ever wonder why Bing Crosby's White Christmas seems like the perfect capsulation of the holiday season? Do you ever wonder how Mariah Carey captured that same magic 60 years later? Do you wonder why Wonderful Christmas Time by Paul McCartney missed the mark completely? Well, I did, and a lot of people also wonder that question. So what exactly makes Christmas music, Christmas music? So you can absolutely add bells to a song and it makes it sound much more Christmassy. For example, if we took Mary Had a Little Lamb and just played it as normal, it might sound like this. to it, it would have much more holiday flair to it and it might sound something more like this. So as you can see, now Mary is, instead of just having her little lamb, she is frolicking through a snow-covered field and her lamb is on the Christmas table. Um, probably about a taking the major mode and it sounds happy but you can change a little bit of it and it's still happy sounding but it has a little bit more of a, a nostalgic feel to it so oftentimes you're going to use a major mode or a major scale uh, because it sounds a little bit happier and that's what mary had a little lamb was in if you go minor it's going to be a little bit sadder and that might not be what you're really looking for around the holiday time uh, but you can also take a major mode and just change a couple notes and it becomes a different scale and it would sound a little bit more nostalgic. For example, it might sound something like this. So it's still in a major key, but he's using some different notes within that scale, changing them a little bit. Uh, to create a different mode and it sounds a little bit more uh, subdued and a little bit quieter and a little bit more uh, contemplative about what the season is. Last thing could obviously be uh, what is the message of the song. Um, if you're going to be talking about Santa Claus or elves or uh, even something just about a joyous feeling or things like that, it could absolutely be used as a holiday song. But when I'm programming for some of the band music on our holiday uh, concert, we absolutely don't play all just like holiday music or Christmas music. We can take something that is very uh, fanfare-ish um, and very exuberant and we could use that on that type of a concert as well and it comes off really, really great. So while the little things might make Christmas music sound the way it does, it creates a music that is forever timeless. This is Sam Massey for CPTV. That's it for today's show. Thanks for tuning in and being with us. Remember, you can view all of our past episodes on crowntownmedia.org. You can also follow us on Twitter at Crown T Media. For Gene Kalerik, Kirsten Robinson, and all of us here at CPTV, I'm Jenna Mylosh. And I'm Armando Bracco. We'll catch you in 2020. Take care.